Hello, and welcome to The Last Step. Yeah, so it's been a couple of weeks since, I, uh, since I've been on the show. I was traveling, so I have many experiences to share, and I got to watch some of Ricky's show. Thank you, Ricky and Emily, for that great testament to what we do with relationship and <laughs> what community is for, for healing and facing these conflicts in our minds. And yeah, I had some of that for the last couple of weeks. And I got Frank joining me again back in Zurich. So I uh, wanted to uh, invite Frank to speak so we can hear how his last couple of weeks have been and see where we go. Hi. Yeah, it's been for, it seems like forever since we've been joining on the show. Uh, I, yeah, it's been really interesting. I've been all over the place. We were in Mallorca, we were in Holland, uh, we were in Portugal. And, um, you know, I was uh, traveling with, with uh, David and Lisa and Suava, to, who joined us in the end. And so for me, it was really like being in mystery school, you know, and uh, I had... It's, you know, it's interesting. I'm feeling, you know, it's the, the thing I was wanted, but, but when I was there, I, there was moments that I thought, oh, I just want to, I just want to go home. And I said, wait a minute, I don't, I don't really have a home anymore. Where do you want to go to your apartment in Zurich? And, you know, I, I just want, I felt, felt a lot of resistance and I was, uh, you know, I, I was linked uh, most of the time with uh, with Lisa, and um, and you know, it, it was getting intense. Uh, a lot of our differences came to the surface, and I, um, you know, I realized how um, you know the life that I've been leading, and you know, I've never really took directions from anybody except you know i started to do that and this is the nice thing i mean this is about the, the last step i started taking directions when i when i joined the 12 steps and and um but it wasn't anything like that you know here we're really making decisions on you know, setting up uh, a uh you know a, a european um uh, uh, center this you know Living Miracles Center for Europe, and we're looking at houses in Mallorca and in in, in uh, Portugal. And this is kind of my world, you know. And I have I specific ideas on how to do that. <laughs> it wasn't at all. Of course, you do. You know, those ideas weren't at all congruent with David's ideas. And so I was, uh, you know, it, it was. I really had to learn to trust. And some of it said, "This seems so screwed up." Why are we doing this? You know, just trust and do it. You know, and the, and I have to always remember what we talked about just before the show. You know, Jeffrey, you've been asking me, have you been uh, setting the goal every day? You know, and the setting the goal is, you know, anything that I do just has one purpose, one goal, mm -hmm. and that's to to you know to find peace. And it's just those things are just backdrops. And then I got to see, you know, so I'm there in Mallorca and this is kind of my world, you know, and, uh, you know, and there's the boats and the things. And, and I see how much, uh, you know, how much uh, self-concept there was, you know. And then Lisa was not at all from this environment. You know, suddenly I thought, yeah, but, you know, you and I, we don't have anything in common. <laughs> you know, my, my self-concept was saying. And then there were moments when I was saying, you know what, I just didn't even want to be associated to her at all. Or, or, um, and so this, I, the thing is, so much stuff got flushed up, you know, and I, I have, um, you know, I've been able to look at it. And I've been also seeing that, you know, I've been encountering incredible amounts of resistance in me, you know, mm. and, um, and, but I know this is my purpose, you know, that's what I've been calling for. But I have to say, you know, it's, it's a lot harder than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> if you knew how hard it was, you wouldn't have done it. <laughs> I thought, if you would have told me, you know, I remember when I went into the 12 steps and I thought, you know, if I could just have a glimpse into the next six months. But if, 
because I, I was ready to commit suicide, you know, 35 years ago. If mm. I knew I was going to have to do all these things, you know, and completely unwind everything that I know, I'm glad I didn't know then because I would have really went for the suicide option. And today, <laughs> you know, I still, I'm, I'm there and I say, why me? You know, I even said to David, why me? You know, why? Why couldn't it be easy? You know, we all come into spirituality at one point or another and we think, you know, I'm just going to bring a little bit of God into the dream or into, you know, but I'm not bringing the dream to God because if I bring the dream to God, I dissolve the dream. And this is what's been happening, you know? Uh, so, so, uh, you know, I, I don't even know where to begin because, so, you know, there's been the fires in, 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 uh, in Malibu where my la ranch almost, uh, burned and I was watching the whole thing. You know, I was, um, on online i was on the phone with my daughter i was there with david and lisa as my house i thought my house was burning you know so i thought wow what an amazing trip and what a blessing to be in this you have to go through it you know uh, to to be able to go through it with them you know so this was a major major unwinding uh and and, you know, the whole of Malibu got scorched almost except my house. You know, it's like, it's, it's totally crazy. It's like the story with my boat, with the big storm, you know, two, two months before that, this storm hit and my boat was, and every, all boats crashed and against the rocks and, my, and I was there you know, in fear and nothing happened. But there was, during that, that fire in Malibu, there was a moment when I completely let go and I said, you know, actually it's a relief because... I don't need all that, that, um, mm. you know, I almost feel guilty about saying it because there were some horses there, but there was a, a relief in saying, you know, this is gone now. You know, I don't have anything to, to, um, I don't have anything to worry about anymore. And then, you know, and then it wasn't gone. And, and I was one of the only houses that, you know, and ranches that survived there, that, that the fire came one yard, stopped one yard from the property all around it. Everything around it was burned. No, I'm, actually, it's, it's not really funny, but it, it was just, um, and, and, you know, we, we mentioned that at the, in Holland at the, at the retreat, and it wasn't, you know, that, you know, the, the old way, oh, I was protected because I'm being good. And, you know, it wasn't about that. It's all in my mind. You know, all these storms are happening in my mind. And I'm being shown, you know, you can let go of everything. And there's not going to be any loss. Because my biggest problem f that I've been going through is, you know, I'm unwinding my mind. But at the same time, there's an in incredible sense of loss because, I've already let go of my relationship with Emma and, you know, I'm, I'm, there's so many things that seem to disappear from my life and it feels like loss, you know, and I think there was just a symbol, you know, like Jesus saying, loss, what loss, <laughs> you know, here's your house, here's your boat, you know, so, so um, anyway, it was beautiful. So you were on a trip too. How was your trip? Yeah, it was, uh, it was amazing. And as you're talking, it brought up, a story of when I was back home and I went back for um, a procedure actually and it happened to end up to be right around Thanksgiving and it was funny we had a little talk here with me and Andy and Andy wanted to go home for Thanksgiving and I was like ah, I don't really feel a need to go home for Thanksgiving and I end up going home for Thanksgiving and we were at dinner and my mother asked me the question I forget what we were talking about but she brought up David's name and she said uh, where does David live? And, uh, and I laughed. And I think we may have even been, at one point I shared that, you know, you guys were looking at places in Mallorca and, and I, I paused for only briefly, a brief second and I said, well, you know, David lives a life that proves that our home is not of this world. So to have, have a room, to have a house that we call a home and is really you know, the opposite. It's this uncompromising approach to that. And as you were talking, I see even my own trip, it was like I went home and coming back here and with Susanna and having the, you know, the contrast from going back and seeing friends and family and, and all of this, there wasn't this, there was that loss is gone. Like 
I mean, there's still some elements of missing certain ones, but it's not there like it was before. You know, even the stuff we shared on the call before this, Frank, with, you know, ideas around houses and money and all this. And I'm like, it was so cool because it's like, I've been through all of it. Like each step, it's like the same thing in 12 steps. It's like sharing the experiences that we've come from. And I'm like, you know, and like you said, it's just this continually a, a walk of trust, like each step, like, you know, the idea is, people want me for my money or whatever it is, it's like, and then we're given the things to show us the direct opposite, you know, we're given mighty companions that have no interest in that, you know, or whatever it looks like, I have a wife, you know, and all these things to show me that. And then I went home and I saw that I didn't miss any of it, you know, there was always these aspects of you know, it's like with, with addiction, you know, you always romanticize the last drink or what it felt like to have the first beer or the first mimosa in the morning. W weren't those great? <laughs> Where I ended up at the end of the day was a whole different story, you know? So it was like even romanticizing relationships, you know, romantic relationship or whatever it is. It's like to see that so much of that has washed away as a result of you know, doing the work of facing these, like Ricky and Emily were talking about, like you're doing with, with Lisa, you know, you're not running, you know, it's like, okay, there is resistance coming up. There is <clears throat> conflict in the mind. It's there. I mean, it is our mind, like you're saying, but we're facing, that's all we do in community here. It's like, we're put together in these holy relationships to actually face whatever it is. I, I actually had an hour, we were driving to the airport on the way back and I went and had a breakfast with my father and it was beautiful. It was like amazing talk that I had with him, just exploring different things that I had questions about and like just a, the opposite reflection that I've ever had. You know, there was no actual distrust. There was only support and like, you know, what can I do for you and all this. And I stopped at a meeting and I was like, oh, maybe we should stop here. I prayed with Susanna. and. She's like, yeah, I'd like to, we, there was a store right near there where she was going to stop and get something. I was like, I hadn't been into a 12-step room in a while, and I knew a lot of people there. And I said, oh, maybe I'll stop in and, and just, you know, and just listen. And I stopped in and listened, and, and then I, I didn't realize it was an hour and 15-minute meeting. And at an hour, Susanna was picking me up, and I shared right before I left. But what I shared was all about the relationships that I had there. And I realized that even from 12 steps, it was always about that. It was always about the people, you know, and as a result, doing the, the work that we're talking about and that you're facing now with, with Lisa. And it was great. Frank called and he was sharing a lot of his private thoughts and what he's, what he's facing, what's coming up for him to be let go of. Really. It's not to be, there was a, uh, a lesson when you started sharing with me, I think it was last night we had our first call in a while and I looked up something and this this lesson came to me and it's lesson 333 which is the daily lesson on like Tuesday or coming up in a few days and it's forgiveness ends the dream of conflict here and it says conflict must be resolved it cannot be evaded set aside denied disguised seen somewhere else called by another name or hidden by deceit of any kind, if it would be escaped. It must be in a scene exactly as it is, where it is thought to be, in the reality which it has been given, and with the purpose that the mind accorded it, for only then are its defenses lifted, and the truth can shine upon it as it disappears. It's like telling me so clearly, like, the only way is to see, identify the problem so that it can be solved, like these conflicts as they come up and, you know, I guess you do have a couple of days, Lisa's driving down to Mallorca and you're, you're there. That's why I was saying, hey, are you doing your morning practice now that you don't have David and Lisa in the same house? And you're like, yeah, yeah maybe it's time to start again. <laughs> it was like, I said, journaling. I said, oh, I got my, my trusty journal with me. It's been priceless just for me to share this and see the patterns, the conflict patterns and all of that. And yeah, so that my trip has been, uh, has been quite revealing in a lot of those a lot of those aspects as well. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting because there's so many things that have been coming, uh, uh, you know, that that have been appearing in in my life since um, <laughs> since the last five weeks. And what you just read, you know, you really 
there's no avoiding it. You know, there's really no avoiding it. Everything needs to be faced. And whenever it feels uncomfortable, I need to go to that discomfort. You know, and, and there's some things that, you know, that uh, Lisa was doing that really got on my nerves and I was trying to avoid it. And, you know, and <laughs> I was, you know, you got to go. And then I was trying to avoid her and stuff like that. And she even said, you know, you, this, you, you have to come into the discomfort zone. Otherwise, it will never heal, mm. you know. And in the 12 steps, you know, it says we were entirely ready to have the stuff removed. And everybody wonders, what does that mean entirely? And that's the entirely. The entirely means I'm willing to, to really, um, you know, to look at it. Yeah to experience it, to feel it, to feel and it. not to shove it down somehow, not to try to avoid it, not, you know, and that's the way. And when I said before that well, that's what I meant when I said this is so much harder than I thought yeah. because everything has to be faced, everything, you know, and there's no escaping. And so I try to, yeah, I avoid this a little bit and maybe I don't. And in the end, I, you know, I expose everything. And this is very fast because, you know, they're all there. And so I can expose, it comes up, whoops, I expose, I expose, I expose, you know, and, and, and it heals. Uh, but as this happens, more comes to the surface. I, oh, God, I thought I was about done with this and none other <laughs> <laughs> regurgitation comes up, you know. Yeah. And that's when I realized when Nisa said, well, your self-concept is so strong, probably the strongest of anybody I've ever known. It's maybe... <laughs> <laughs> and she said it. <laughs> oh, <that's classic. laughs> that it's out of control you know and and so thank god i have this i i i have this call because otherwise i would never confront this stuff you know mm. i mean the people from my background they think if i would tell him only two percent of what i'm doing they would think i'm totally <laughs> insane you know so but i want you know i want to and then there's this thing you also said there's no running because I know, you know, sometimes with Lisa, at one point I was close. It was actually the two weeks ago at the, this hour when we were supposed to have the show a little before. Yeah. We, we got into this fight, you know, we went in <laughs> and then we got in, <laughs> stuck in there, you know. And then said, that's it. I'm getting a plane tomorrow. <laughs> you know, and there was, and then I said, and then, you know, we called David and I said, I'm not leaving. Where am I going to go? Of course I'm not leaving, you know, because I know I'm not leaving. You know, right. and I said it tonight to, to Lisa again. You know, there's many times I say, I just want to run away. But mm. I, I never did. I haven't run away in 35 years. It just, the road gets narrower. The, the, the stakes become higher and higher, you know, because, but yeah. I'm, not, I'm leaving. I'm not leaving. I mean, <laughs> I'm not leaving. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. I was, I, at that, I was at that meeting and now I remember... Um, what it is I did say, I shared that just about a few of the individuals that were, you know, in the room, like sharing the gratitude actually for a few of them. And there was a few people that shared before and one of, I don't like to, as you probably know from being in rooms to back share, they would call it where someone was like, yeah, you know, I just don't care anymore about what anyone says or any of this stuff. And then this other guy shared that I had this connection with him and he always had this rigidness to him. And let me tell you, when I saw him this time, it was completely different. And I was like, oh my God, this guy, Mike was his name. It was like, it's like he softened so much. Of course, it's not really the case. <laughs> but when he shared, he was like, yeah, I, uh, you know, I have to say I do care. And he shared a little bit. And then when I shared, I remember saying, I was just like, you know what I realize now is that I do care and I care more deeply about everything but now I'm willing to actually do what you're saying. I'm actually willing not to run, to willing to feel it, you know, feel the discomfort or feel it. So what we call in the shows a lot here is washing it away. We're washing away the self-concept, the identification with those concepts that make us feel those way. And in the 12 step, it's those seven parts of self that Lisa's telling you is very strong. <laughs> That's classic. <laughs> but it's like, as soon as I can identify those, and bring my awareness to it. It's actually, you know, what I just read in that lesson, 333. It's like I can bring my awareness to it and actually not deny it or say, hey, I don't care because that, that was what I said my whole life. Like, I really thought I didn't care about anything, but the truth was I cared very deeply about everything, you know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. 
and that's also you want know, one of the avoidance things. Yeah, I don't care, and I, I'm just. I know it's just uh, you know been so. Um, yeah, it's been intense because there's been this outrage. How can you ask me to do this? And you know, and actually they didn't ask. You know, anything I'm doing is is voluntary. <laughs> but then, <laughs> you know, it's just it's just crazy how how uh, how the the you know, the, the, the ego retaliates, but, you know, always you were talking about gratitude. And even as I was thinking, you know, this, this, I mean, we were just watching the, the, the fire online, you know, and, um, and then I could see on a map how the red zone and I thought, Oh my God, it's getting closer. And there were some horses they couldn't get all the horses out. And by the time they came back for the last horses, they wouldn't let them through. So I thought, oh my God, there's still horses there. And my neighbor stayed there he, with a gas mask. I mean, crazy guy with a gas mask. He wouldn't leave his wife left. So, so he was like, he was feeding my horses. You know, I thought at, at one point, Lisa came in my room and said, you know, I think your ranch is gone now. <laughs> and so I went down and I saw the red all over the map and I said, okay, it's gone. And then the same day we find out that this guy, he has been feeding the three horses. You know, they were roaming free, but he was putting water and throwing out hay for them. And so, wow, you know, what a healing in my mind, you know, mm. that, that, this is, that this is the picture. And, um, you know, there, is, there, there was no loss. But then I thought, my God, what a blessing to have this, you know, everybody was in such distress. And I'm watching this and I have David and Lisa right there with me mm. as I'm watching my ranch almost burn. And I'm not watching it because you could only see certain details. So we don't know, you know, <laughs> and wow, you know, what a gift. And, I then, almost... and then, you know, talk about, talk about the, the, there. I really, you were asking me, uh, are, are you setting the goal? I said, this fire has one goal only, you know, to bring me peace. You know, this is what I learned from, from <laughs> you <laughs> telling me, you know, because I've had, I've had a lot of practice reading that for weeks before. And there it really mm. came. There's only one purpose is, is peace. You know, this is just the backdrop. I remember uh, as this was going on, Frank wanted us to have a uh, song, but we didn't get the copyright from Neil Young yet to open oh. our show. And the song is, it's only castles burning. Find someone who's turning and you will come around. And it was like, and you literally had, you couldn't turn anywhere. You had David and Lisa flanking you. You couldn't literally turn anywhere away from, away from that. Yeah, the, when you, you said that about, I remember when you told me about the guy feeding your horses, it's like such a symbol of being taken care of. Like you're halfway across the world and you have this fear of, I know the ranch burning, but deeper you were saying the horses. There was a attachment to some of the horses and yeah. And then this constant fear of loss that I'm having because I perceive, I perceive, uh, you know, the, the unwinding as a loss, <laughs> you know, there's, there's no loss. Yeah. And, and, you know, today I was talking to somebody here that I, you know, that from the 12 steps, but, but he's, he's doing the, the, the lessons now. And he's really, he went in deep and I told him, you know, uh, a, a lot of this work is very hard for me because it's perceived as loss. And he just said to me, yeah, well, I guess that's easier for me because I have nothing to lose, you know. And then mm -hmm. I realized, you know, I have, it seems in the world that I have a lot to lose. And, uh, and I guess that's what Lisa meant also. This, <laughs> this is out of control. And then I went deeper into the thing and I said, yeah, you know, I've never, I've always pretty much did what I wanted and I've been <laughs> bossing people around and I, I mm -hmm. never had to take any, you know, and, uh, uh, orders from anybody and now you know i'm getting these directions that make no sense in the world and so there's this moment I say okay now is time to trust you know that's it um and and this it, it's, it's it's great you know it's it's a surrender it's a total surrender and um and and it's going fast i feel it's going very fast for me yeah there's you know, today I said to Lisa, look where we are. Do you realize I only met you eight months ago? <laughs> she laughed. She said, oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look at all we're doing, you know. 
I'm yeah. glad you guys know. <laughs> you have a deep call and it's being answered. When you're, you were talking about that, there's this, you know, there's the line in the course that we don't follow guidance because we believe there, it, following guidance is deprivation if we actually knew that it was, means giving up nothing. And that's all we're doing over and over with one another is practicing following guidance and realizing we're being given everything. You know, it was like, I think we only have, yeah, four minutes. I was going to share this idea of, I was sharing with you on the, on the phone earlier. I went home for, for a procedure, which was a vasectomy. And a year, probably a year and a half ago before I got married and I was already in community and it was like, I had felt I didn't want to have kids or, and so at the time I, I joined with Jason and prayed and it was like, no, maybe you want to take some time and see, you know, with your wife and, you know, actually, you know, this whole idea that there is, it's literally preying on for what is the best, in my own best interests. And I get that reflection so often that, yeah, it's, it's amazing. And then this trip, when I went home, it like everything fell into place. It was like, called the doctor and it was like, well, if you have a, an opening and these doctors are so backed up, they're like, well, if we have one that day, we'll call you back. And they call me back and it lands on the day. And we went there and the miracle for me was, there was a few, but the, uh, I had called and there was this one doctor, the highly sought after doctor that everyone's like, this guy's the best. And of course, if you're having him working on that portion of your body, <laughs> really want the best or I did. <laughs> so when I, <laughs> when, I went to, uh, when I went to see the guy, he wasn't available, so I saw his assistant, and I put his assistant's number, his phone number, in my phone as the uh, the other guy's number. So when I called and set up this appointment, I thought I was calling the other doctor, and you know there was still a doubt in my mind, like, "Ooh, I really want the other guy." I didn't know until I was sitting in the room, and actually the door opened, and it was the doctor, the highly sought after doctor, walked in, and I was like wait a minute, like, like I thought I was expecting the other guy and this guy walked in. It was like I knew him my whole life. He's like, yeah, so I guess you talked to Dr. So-and-so a year ago and yeah, did you ever end up marrying? He'd already talked to the guy and found out all these. Did you ever end up marrying that girl? I said, yeah, she's out in the lobby and you know, I had the support there and he's like, oh, great, let's do this. And like we literally talked, there was no pain, very you know, minimal and it was like a total miracle. When I walked out, it's like you get a local, like lidocaine. It's a local anesthesia and, you know, no drugs or anything. And I walked out, but when I walked out into the, the lobby and I saw Susanna, like the same, I was sharing this with you, Frank, the same like dizziness that I've had a few times and, it, and it, like noticeably, like when I signed the, <laughs> signed for when I bought a house in Mexico, when I actually in 12-step recovery, when I, when I told my sponsor one time, I remember there was something I wasn't going to tell him about something I wanted to do. And I was like, what do I have to lose? And I shared it with him. And when I shared it with him, I was like dizzy. And it was like, and I realized in that moment, it was like literally surrendering all my plan B's like over and over. Like, what would you have me do? Waiting a year and a half. Like, this is what I thought it was, but let me be sure. Let me make sure it's given. Like, even with every step that you're taking with houses, you thought it would be in my uh, Portugal. And then you got all the healing there. And it's like, no, move here. And this is the house. No, it's not. And here, your house is going to burn down. No, it's not. It's like you get to mind watch so much and see that you're actually taken care of and that, yeah, it can't, it can't go wrong. So, yeah, we're just about out of time. So uh, you got one minute to, to wrap it up, Frank. And Oh, I, yeah. I wrap it up. Okay. Well, you can wrap it up today, Frank. I'm feeling it. Okay. So anyway, I wanted also to say we're probably going to do, no, we are going to do a meditation after. So I really wrap up the whole show later. And uh, thank you so much. Love you, Frank. I love, love you, you, everyone out there and online and Spiri.ai and YouTube. And uh, See you next week.